Now the form is yours. Any questions, comments you might have, whatever, um, be happy to try and answer them. If we ha can't answer them here today, we will get answers for you. So, uh, Lynn is going to have a microphone. We'd appreciate it if you'd ask us so we can, so everyone can hear the questions, including myself. My hearing aids work, but not always that great. Okay, who wants to be first? I have never seen this group be bashful. There has to be a question here somewhere. Oh, all right, there we go. Joe Fell, I knew he wouldn't let us down. Just a uh, wonderful job what you guys are doing, and uh, Lynn certainly keeps us on one of the AWA, and that's up to date on all the progress. And I run the uh, Bruce Kelly down on Fridays as NCS, and unfortunately, Lynn has a conflict there. The thing, uh, everything I see is wonderful. Uh, I think you guys are on a great mission, heading down the right path, and doing a wonderful thing. Uh, and, and looking at young kids and knowing what lights them up, so to speak, even though they may not have filaments. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I encourage you to have some interactive displays. Mm -hmm. A lot of time, as a young child, you know, we go to the museums and maybe we don't have the uh, maturity yet. And we see a lot of things behind glass shelves. And I'm not saying that everything has to be available to them, but it would be nice to, I, I remember when Bruce Kelly years ago demonstrated the rotary spark transmitter when it, you guys were in Canandaigua, and the impression that that left. So it, it's really good in maybe every five or six or eight years, and there's a major technological change in radio, having a setup that the curator or who's ever manning the stations can flip the switch on, be it a, a cathedral radio or whatever, tune in a farm station, an amateur wireless setup, and show them how it actually works, rather than just looking at things behind panels. I, I, and that may be part of your vision, I'm not saying it's not, but I think it's very, very significant and taking that one kid out of a hundred and lighten him up and then he becomes another engineer. Hopefully we'll light him up without using the spark on him. <laughs> yeah, right. So, uh, you're great. absolutely right. Wonderful job though. Oh, thank you, and you're absolutely right. Uh, there will be displays for that. The, the process that we're looking at is every area of history that you go into the museum, there will be an interactive component for kids in every area that we have of history. So they get a chance with telegraph, they'll get a chance with all that sort of thing. Lynn, one of the, Lynn's responsibilities is to make sure we have a complete working ham station in the museum itself. So it's interactive, it can be used at any time. The theater that we're putting in, okay, that is designed for interactive. We already have people signing up to do uh, old radio programs. Uh, we are looking at putting in a broadcast station there that will broadcast live in the community area and it will be available for the community to use, okay, uh, radio station, so that it would be more meaningful as you drive toward our museum, tune to stations so-and-so and so-and-so, and, -so, and you hear some old radio programs, but you'll also hear what's going on in East Bloomfield. Uh, the town is excited, really are. Uh, and this is why Ron is our interface with the town. Ron doesn't live in the town, but Ron is probably known more in that town than most people in the town. He's the only guy that shows up at all the board meetings. And every time he walks in, they go, well, public's here. Right, Ron? Yeah. So Ron is our emissary. Yeah, but the, 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 we want interaction. And there's a personal piece of it for me. Somebody someday it's got to replace me and it won't be any play in this room more than likely except Lynn he's, he's waiting in the wings but from the standpoint we have to be ready to turn it over to another generation at some point in time and that spark needs to be done to make sure they're there great now it reminds me of that advertisement on television where they, the web developer opens up a company and they accelerate because they get their first order. Then the second order comes in and then they start pounding in. So the problem for us is we have to make sure that as we see the ideas and they come and they're wonderful ideas and we appreciate them, we just have to prioritize them because it's, it's going to, how are we going to do that? But that doesn't mean it ought not to be done, it ought to be designed into the process. I think if you look at the floor plan, you'll see an area that's marked interactive and, and uh, that's really important. You know, I, 
show me a ham that doesn't, two things I've learned about being a ham for 26 years. Number one, no one ever opens the books, although now with a flex you've got to do that. Uh, but no one opens the books, what do they do? They grab the knobs and start turning them, right? First thing that happens, everybody's out there shopping in the flea market, what are they doing? Turning the knobs, right? So we have to have the kids that have the ability to do that, maybe build crystal sets or whatever uh, on, on a Saturday morning. So great idea, thank you. Other questions? We got a question right here. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, I have a two part question. Um, the first question is, uh, I'm involved with the Northern California, uh, California Historical Radio Society, and um, we'd like to buy the radio station, KRE in Berkeley, where we are. It's a nice location. Um, so I was asked to call um, John Jenkins at Bellingham and have him come down. I said, John, we'll pay your way, come down and tell us how we can maybe do this. And uh, what, I, what we find out is he's very discouraged because uh, no one really wants to go to Bellingham. Uh, and it's not a destination, it's, it's far off the map. Um, and I wonder the same thing sometime about, you know, about Holcomb or, I'm not sure, the, the little town down there. Bluefield. Uh, Bluefield. I, you know, I also wonder that too. And I guess the other part of the question, because I, I actually, believe it or not, and I'm embarrassed to say this, I was on the board of the Perrin Foundation in 1988 until it, its demise. And we, we went through the same thing over and over. We had drawings and not, as beautiful as that, but we, we did have a plan and land and a, a place to be. Um, so I guess my, my final question, I don't want to monopolize this, how much money will this cost and how much do you have? Uh, right now, we're trying to finalize the estimates from that. We're expecting that the total cost, including the amount of funding for a viral co-endowment, which will throw up income to support the expenses of the museum, are somewhere between four and five million dollars. And right now we have about a million dollars committed. So we've got to start. But a start is what we need to have. A start is what we've got. We need help. And we'll be asking for uh, for you to, to join in on a conversation. This is going to be your missing museum. And so we're asking for you to help us with that. Good question. Right now, I wish I could give you a tighter answer than that, but it's in, I will tell you, it's probably, right now, my, my mindset's around $5 million. We're expecting the construction of the museum to be about two, and then we need an endowment fund. And with the interest rates where they are today, it's pretty tough. But if you figure long term, 4%, I think that's a pretty good number that, that people are usually talking about. We probably need another uh, two to three million dollars of endowment to make sure that we're having the funding. We're not expecting the membership dues to fund the operation of the museum. The membership dues right now are being consumed in, in the values that you're getting. The journal, the review, the other things that go on in AWA. So, uh, what we what we're proposing to do here is to fund it enough so that we can uh, have it self-sustained. Okay, and we don't charge admission uh, at this point. That may come. Uh, I'm not I'm not setting that aside. And I know that's probably a question in your mind. Should there be admissions? Well. <coughs> When we get the museum that we're talking about, we may have to look at some modest you know, uh, admission fee. 